When a disabled vet confronts Trump during a speech, his emotional reaction will make you cry. A year later, this confrontation ignites changes that even the vet and his wife find almost impossible to believe. The atmosphere in the PAC Convention Center crackles with anticipation. Thousands of veterans and their families have gathered to hear Donald Trump speak about his plans for reforming the Department of Veterans Affairs. The air is thick with a mix of hope and skepticism. As Trump takes the stage, the crowd erupts in a cacophony of cheers and applause. Some stand, waving flags and chanting his name, while others remain seated, arms crossed, waiting to be convinced. Thank you, thank you, Trump begins, his signature confidence on full display. His distinctive voice bursts through the speakers, filling every corner of the vast hall. We're going to make the VA outstanding again, folks. Believe me. The former president launches into his prepared remarks, touching on the familiar themes of American greatness and the sacred duty owed to those who serve. His words are met with nods of agreement and sporadic applause. But there is an undercurrent of restlessness in the crowd. These are men and women who have heard political speeches before and lived the reality behind the rhetoric. As Trump continues, a commotion near the front of the crowd catches his attention. A man in a wheelchair, dressed in full military uniform adorned with medals and ribbons, is trying to make his way forward. The woman pushing his chair, determination etched on her face, seems intent on reaching the stage. Trump pauses mid-sentence, his eyes fixed on the approaching pair. The audience falls silent, tension filling the air. Secret Service agents move to intercept, their earpieces buzzing with urgent communications. But Trump, sensing the importance of the moment, waves them off. Hold on, folks, Trump says into the microphone, his voice softer now. I want to hear what this brave veteran has to say. The crowd parts like the Red Sea, creating a path for the wheelchair as it reaches the bottom of the stage. Trump does something unexpected. He descends the steps, microphone in hand, and the entire convention center holds its collective breath. This is an unbelievable moment, a departure from the carefully choreographed political theater they are accustomed to. What will unfold? What's your name, soldier? Trump asks, his usual bravado replaced by a tone of genuine curiosity. Sergeant Todd Miller, sir, the man replies, his voice trembling slightly. The medals on his chest clink softly as he straightens in his chair. I served 21 years with the 101st Airborne. I need to talk to you about the VA. Trump nods, gesturing for Todd to continue. The microphone picks up every word, broadcasting this intimate conversation to the thousands in attendance and millions more watching on television. As Todd begins to speak, his mind races back through the years. He remembers the day he enlisted, fresh out of high school in a small Midwest town. He had been filled with patriotic fervor and dreams of serving his country, of making a difference in the world. The recruiting officer's words echo in his memory. Son, you've got what it takes to be one of the best. He thinks of the friends he made during basic training and the bonds forged through shared hardship and triumph. Some of those friends are now just names etched on memorial walls, sacrifices made in far off lands. Todd's mind flashes to his multiple deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan the searing heat, the constant tension, and moments of sheer terror interspersed with long stretches of mind-numbing boredom. He remembers the pride he felt leading his fellow soldiers into battle, the weight of responsibility for their lives on his shoulders. And then, unbidden, comes the memory of that fateful day when an IED changed everything. The deafening explosion, the world turning upside down, the searing pain, and then, nothing. He had woken up in a field hospital, his legs gone, his future uncertain. The explosion left Todd with severe spinal injuries and both legs missing. But it was the battles he faced after returning home that truly tested his spirit. Endless paperwork, bureaucratic hurdles, and a system that seemed designed to wear down even the most resilient veterans. Todd remembers the countless hours spent in VA waiting rooms, the phone calls that went unanswered, and the promises of care that never materialized. Each day brought a new challenge, a new form to fill out, a new hoop to jump through. Todd's wife, April, had been his rock through it all. He glances at her now, standing beside his wheelchair, her hand resting protectively on his shoulder. 
She had sacrificed her own career as a teacher to become his full-time caregiver. But as the months turned into years, even her unwavering support couldn't shield Todd from the growing sense of abandonment by the country he had sacrificed so much to serve. As these memories flood back, Todd's composure begins to crack. His voice, which had started strong, now quivers with emotion. Mr. President, he continues, tears welling up in his eyes. The system is broken. I've been trying for months to get the care I need, but I'm caught in an endless cycle of red tape and waiting lists. April, he gestures to his wife, has become my full-time caregiver because the VA can't or won't help. Something has to change. Todd's voice breaks completely, and he begins to sob openly. Years of frustration and pain pouring out in front of thousands. April squeezes his shoulder, her own tears glistening. The crowd watches in stunned silence as this decorated veteran, a symbol of strength and sacrifice, breaks down before them. Many in the audience find themselves wiping away their own tears, moved by the raw emotion of the moment. Veterans in the crowd nod in silent understanding, their own struggles reflected in Todd's words. Trump, visibly affected by Todd's breakdown, places a hand on the veteran's arm. The gesture is small, but in that moment, it bridges the gap between politician and citizen, between commander-in-chief and soldier. Todd, Trump says, his voice uncharacteristically gentle, I want you to know that I hear you. Your service, your sacrifice, it means everything to this country, and you deserve so much better than what you're getting. As Todd struggles to regain his composure, Trump addresses the crowd. His voice, amplified by the microphone, echoes through the convention center. Folks, what we're seeing here is a wake-up call. Our brave veterans, the men and women who put everything on the line for our freedom, are being let down by a broken system. It's unacceptable, and it stops now. Trump's voice grows stronger, filled with determination. Todd and April, I want you to know that your struggle, your story, it's not going to be in vain. We're going to use this moment as a catalyst for real lasting change in how we treat our veterans. As Trump speaks, Todd's sobs gradually subside, replaced by a look of cautious hope. For the first time in years, he feels truly heard. The weight of his struggles, carried for so long in silence, seems to lift ever so slightly. I promise you, Trump continues, his words carrying the weight of a solemn vow. We're going to fix this broken system, not just for Todd, but for every veteran who's been let down. No more endless wait times, no more bureaucratic nightmares. We're going to make sure our veterans get the care they've earned and the respect they deserve. Trump pulls out a business card and a pen, handing them to Todd. I want you to write down your contact information right here. I'm going to personally see to it that you get the care you need. I also want you and April to be my special guests at a policy meeting next week. We're going to sit down, hear your story in full, and start crafting real solutions. As Todd carefully writes his information, his hands shaking slightly, the reality of the moment begins to sink in. This isn't just another empty promise or political platitude. This is a chance for his voice to be heard at the highest levels of government. The convention center erupts in applause as Trump helps April push Todd's wheelchair onto the stage. The sound is deafening, like a tidal wave of support and emotion washing over them. Veterans in the crowd stand at attention, rendering salutes to their fellow soldier. Todd, his face still streaked with tears, but now bearing a glimmer of hope, feels compelled to address the crowd. He gestures for the microphone which Trump hands over without hesitation. Thank you, Todd says, his voice hoarse with emotion. He clears his throat, gathering strength from the sea of supportive faces before him. Thank you for listening. To all my fellow veterans out there struggling, don't give up. Maybe now, finally, things will change. As the audience rises in a standing ovation, Todd's tears flow freely once again. But this time, they are tears of relief of being heard, of daring to hope for a better future. His raw emotional reaction not only moves the crowd, but also reignites a national conversation about the treatment of veterans. The impact of Todd's words spreads beyond the convention center. News outlets pick up the story, broadcasting clips of the emotional encounter to millions of homes across the country. Social media explodes with reactions.
with hashtags trending as people share their own stories of struggles with the VA system. For Todd and April Miller, their impromptu confrontation with Trump marks the beginning of a new chapter in their lives, one filled with both challenge and hope. As they leave the convention center that day, they carry with them the weight of responsibility for all the veterans whose stories have yet to be heard. In the days that follow, Todd finds himself thrust into the spotlight. Interview requests pour in from major news networks, all eager to hear more about his story and his hopes for VA reform. At first, the attention is overwhelming. Todd had never sought to be a spokesperson or a symbol. He was just a soldier who had served his country and wanted the care he had been promised. But as he shares his story again and again, Todd begins to realize the power of his voice. He hears from countless veterans who see themselves in his struggle and who have faced similar battles with bureaucracy and indifference. Their messages of support and solidarity give him strength, reinforcing his determination to see through the changes he had set in motion. The policy meeting with Trump and his team, held the following week as promised, is both exhausting and exhilarating. For hours, Todd and April share the details of their journey, the good, the bad, and the ugly of navigating the VA system. They talk about the dedicated doctors and nurses who do their best within a broken system. They express the frustration of endless wait times and lost paperwork, the toll it has taken on their family, and their hope for the future. Trump and his advisors listen intently, asking questions and taking copious notes. There are moments of tension as hard truths are confronted, but also moments of breakthrough as new ideas are proposed and considered. As the meeting concludes, Trump makes another promise to Todd in April. Your story isn't going to be filed away in some report, he assures them. We're going to use it as a roadmap for real, lasting change. I want you both involved throughout the process. It isn't an effortless road. There are setbacks and disappointments, moments when it seems like the entrenched bureaucracy will never change. But there are also victories, small at first, then growing in significance. New legislation is introduced, aimed at streamlining the VA system and improving access to care. Funding is increased for mental health services and programs to help veterans transition back to civilian life. A year after that fateful confrontation at the convention center, Todd and April find themselves back on stage, this time at a ceremony marking the signing of the most comprehensive VA reform bill in decades. As Todd watches the president sign the legislation into law, he feels a profound sense of accomplishment mixed with humility. He knows this is just the beginning. The real work of implementing these changes and transforming the VA's culture is still ahead. But for the first time in years, he feels genuine hope not just for himself, but for all the veterans who have served their country with honor and deserve nothing less than the best care and support their nation can provide. As the ceremony concludes and the crowd begins to disperse, a young soldier in uniform approaches Todd. The man stands at attention and salutes, his eyes shining with emotion. Sergeant Miller, the young soldier says, his voice filled with respect. I just wanted to thank you. What you've done, what you've started, it's going to make a difference for all of us. You never stopped fighting for your fellow soldiers. Todd returns the salute, feeling the full weight of the moment. We take care of our own, he says simply. Always have, always will. As Todd and April leave the ceremony, they know their journey is far from over. There will be more battles to fight, more stories to tell, and more changes to advocate for. But they also know that they are no longer alone in this fight. Todd's tears on that stage a year ago did more than just move a crowd. They touched the nation's conscience, reminding America of its sacred obligation to those who serve. In doing so, they sparked a movement, a renewed commitment to honoring the sacrifices of veterans, not just with words, but with meaningful action. As they step out into the Washington sunshine, Todd squeezes April's hand. You know, he says, a smile playing at the corners of his mouth, I think we might just have started something here. April laughs, her voice filled with love and hope for the future. Started something? She replies. Honey, I think you might have just changed the world. And as they make their way down the street, Todd's wheelchair gleaming in the sunlight, they carry with them the hopes and dreams of countless veterans, a living testament to the power of one voice to make a difference and the enduring strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity.
Have you ever witnessed or experienced a moment where a personal struggle led to widespread change? If you were in Todd's position, facing years of frustration with the VA system, would you have found the courage to speak up so publicly? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.